Hi and welcome to Redemptorist Media Center's brand new program, Faith Champs, an inter-school quiz competition. I'm your host, Father Charles Vijay Kumar, and I'm here with two wonderful teams, one from St. Charles School and another from St. Anthony Claret, Bangalore. On my left is Andrea and Hazel from uh, St. Charles High School and on my, le on my right is St. Anthony from St. Anthony's Claret is Joachim and Noel. I guess Joachim is in 8th grade and uh, Noel is in ninth, right? And uh, both Hazel and uh, Andrea are in 8th grade. A warm welcome to both the teams. Are you excited to play this game? So this is the first uh, game for you and if you win this game you're going to enter the semi-finals and uh, if you win the semi-finals you will be right out there on the final match okay the most important thing of faith champs is to prove that you are champs in what in your faith and uh, and i'm sure you've taken a lot of trouble to prepare yourselves the syllabus that was given to you is we asked you to prepare yourself from the book of Genesis, from the Old Testament and also Prophet Isaiah. We also gave you from the New Testament, Matthew, letter to the Romans. And we also asked you to prepare from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Prologue, Part 1, and all three chapters of that section. And also questions related to Catholic trivia. Okay, so all the questions that we're going to have today will be related to the, to the syllabus that we gave you. But of course, we will have a few other questions also to trick you. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Yes, Father. Okay. Before we get on to the first round, I would like to ask you a question. Are you tensed? You are not. Okay. If you're not tensed, then I'll ask you another question. No points for this. Just to make sure you are listening to me and uh, and to set you uh, on good spirits to start the game okay simple question what do you call a priest a catholic priest who also studies law what do you call a catholic priest who also studies law don't know father-in-law You don't get points for that, <laughs> but I guess you have a smile on your face. That's good enough to start our first round. Okay, let me explain to you what the first round is going to be all about. It's multiple options round. Each of you will be given a question. This question will appear on the screen with four options, A, B, C, and D. Look at the question and take your time to discuss the answer. And when you know the answer, you can speak it out into the mic the first answer that i hear is what will be considered okay so don't rush to give out the answer if you have enough time no need to hurry when you're ready you can speak the answer into the mic the first answer that i hear i consider that if you get the answer right you get 10 points if you get it wrong you don't lose anything neither do you gain anything we have five questions for each team so at the end of the round, if you answer all five questions, each of you stand to gain 50 points. Are you ready for it? Yes, Father. Anthony Claret? Yes, Father. Very good. Let's begin with St. Charles. Okay. Your first question. Your first question is on the screen. The desire for God is what? Option A must be developed by prayer and fasting b is written in the human heart c is received at baptism and d is lost because of original sin what's the right answer the desire for god dash a b c and d take your time Look at the question, it is something that you have prepared. When you know the answer, you can tell. Option D. 
Okay. So and Charles have given the first answer and they have picked the desire for God as option D is lost because of original sin. What do you think? Joaquin, is that correct? Are you sure? What is the right answer? Option B is written. Oh, they wish they would have got it, got that question, but I'm so sorry, that's a wrong answer. The right answer is what Joy Kim said. It is option B is written in the human heart. We read that in Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 27. The desire for God is written in the human heart because man is created by God and for God. Don't worry. This is just the beginning. You have many questions on your way and you will be able to gain your points. Okay, good start St. Charles. And let's go on to Anthony Claret, Noel and Joachim. Your question is on the screen. The living transmission of the full and living gospel accomplished in the Holy Spirit is called dash. A. Tradition. B. Commission. C. Ruha. D. Canon. Take your time. Then you know the answer. You can give me the answer by speaking into your mic. Ready? Go ahead. Option C, Ruha. Option C, Ruha. The living transmission of the full and living gospel accomplished in the Holy Spirit is called Ruha. Is... What do you think? Is the wrong answer. Ruha is spirit in itself. But the right answer is A tradition. We read that in the Catechism of the Catholic Church number 78. The living transmission accomplished in the Holy Spirit is called tradition since it is distinct from sacred scripture though closely connected to it. But anyway, you have a long way again. You have many questions on the way so you will still be able to gain your points. So that both of you are on equal footing with no points on the board but a second question for you St. Charles. You ready? Be sealed with a gift of the Holy Spirit is uttered during which sacrament? A. Baptism B. Confirmation C. Holy Orders and D. Anointing of the Sick Confirmation. Okay, you were very sure about it. How sure are you about this? It is what you have given weight. Hold on. You said B, confirmation. How sure are you about it? 50-50? 100%? 100% sure? How about you? Wish you would have got that question, right? The answer is right. You get 10 points, your first point on the board the answer is confirmation be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit is uttered during the sacrament of confirmation congratulations St. Charles you've gained your first 10 points let's see if St. Anthony Claret can get their first point with the next question the oil used for anointing at confirmation baptism and holy orders is called a charism b Catechumen, C, Chrism, and D, Christ oil. Look at those options. The oil used in the time of confirmation, baptism, and also holy orders is called what? Ready? Okay, go ahead. Option C, Chrism. Option C is Chrism. Chrism oil, what do you think? Chrism. That's right. Yes. So shall we give them 10 points? With due permission, we give you 10 points. That's your second 10 points for this first round. 
Congratulations, Anthony Claret. That's the right answer. The oil is called chrism oil, which is used for all three sacraments. Now we have the next question to St. Charles. The question is on the screen. The verse, the scepture shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, which is believed to be a reference to Christ, is found in Dash. A. Genesis B. Deuteronomy C. Matthew and D. Isaiah Look at it. All those books are the ones that you have studied. Option D, Isaiah, is what St. Charles have picked. And Antin Claret, it's the right answer. But thank God even you didn't get that question because the answer is wrong. I'm sorry about it. The answer is Genesis. We read that in Genesis 49, verse 10. Isaiah was a Close guess, but the right answer is Genesis 49.10. The scepture shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet, until tribute comes to him, and the obedience of the people is his. Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. But don't worry, you already have some points on the board. You have 10 points, but two more questions on your way, and you also have 10 points, but you have three questions to answer. Are you ready for the next one? If you answer this, you can have a lead in this round. Okay? The question is on the screen. What type of tree was the tree of knowledge of good and evil mentioned in Genesis? Was it a fig tree? B. Was it an apple tree? C. Was it a mustard tree? Or D. It was not mentioned. Take your time, look at the options, discuss it. What kind of tree was it? You ready? Okay, go ahead. Option D. It was not mentioned. Option D. It was not mentioned. Haven't you seen those pictures with Eve holding an apple in her hand. Right? So what kind of tree was it? What do you think? It's not mentioned. Are you sure? Then what about the apple? It is right. <laughs> that is the right answer. It's option D. We don't know what tree it was because the Bible does not mention it. It was the artist's imagination to make it an apple. So we think it's an apple tree, but no. The verse reads, Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat, for the day you eat of it, you shall die. We don't know what the tree it was. We all, all that we know, it was a tree of good and evil. Good for Anthony Claret. You get 10 points and you also have a 10 points lead in this round. Very good. You have still two more questions to go. You have scored 20 points and it's your turn now, St. Charles, to get your extra points on the board. Are you ready? Are you, are you, are you tensed? No? You're excited to get your points? I'm sure you will. The question is on the screen. Which king was not in power when Isaiah was prophet? Option A, Ahaz. B, 
Uz- Uziah, C. Abijah, and D. Hezekiah. Who was not in power when Isaiah was prophet? Only three of them were kings, one was not. Who is it? Option C is what you have picked, that is Abijah. How sure are you about this? It's a difficult question. How sure? 100%? 100%. That's very impressive because you do get 10 points for this. That is the right answer. Abijah, option C is the right answer because Isaiah chapter 1, verses 1 says, the vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Huziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Of course, Abijah's name is not mentioned in the first verse, and you got it right. Very good, St. Charles. You have 20 points on board, and one more question to go. That leaves Anthony Claret to get your points to be ahead in the game. Are you ready? Okay, the question is on the screen. In Isaiah 45, the Lord calls this person as his anointed to subdue the nations, to make his name known from east to west. Who is he talking about? Was it A. Jesus, B. Cyrus, C. Nebuchadnezzar, and D. David? Isaiah 45, God is calling out to someone to subdue the nations. Who was it? Not an easy question, but still, I'm sure you have to bet. You ready? Good. Do you reckon? Uh, option A, Jesus. Option A, Jesus in the book of Isaiah is what Anthony Claret had picked. What makes you say that? Jesus was mentioned. Was the name Jesus mentioned in the book of Isaiah? How sure are you about your answer? 50-50? 50-50. Shall we give them the points? Yes? You seem to be quite generous. <laughs> I cannot give them the points because that is a wrong answer. I'm sorry about it, Anthony Claret. Jesus was not mentioned in Isaiah. Of course, references are there, but the name of Jesus is not mentioned. But the actual person to whom God calls out is option B, Cyrus. We read that in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1. And thus says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him. It is Cyrus. Doesn't matter. You still have 20 points on board. And one more question to go. That makes both of you having 20 points in this first round with one question left. So, if you want to have a lead in this question, better get this right. Are we ready? St. Charles, your question is on the screen. King Herod told the wise men to send word to him once they found the young child so he could come and do what? A. Kill him. B. Bring him gifts. C. Worship him. D. Make him king. Read the question carefully. King Herod told the wise men to send word to him once they found the young child so he could come and do what? Option C, worship him. Option C, worship him. You look quite confident about it. Are you? 
How sure are you? Do you know your Christmas story pretty well, I guess? Yes? yes? yes. You're sure? Yes. Shall we give them the points? Well, they are sure and it is correct. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> St. Charles, you got it. Right? It was a good answer. And you were quite confident about it. We read that in Matthew chapter 2, verse 8. And then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. That is to worship, which is the correct answer. Congratulations, you have 30 points on board. You've only lost 20 in this round, so you've got 30 points. Good for you. Let's see if Anthony Claret also get their last point. You ready? The last question, Noel and Joachim, the question is on the screen. What did Judas do with the money that he was given to betray Jesus? What did he do with the money? A. He bought a field. B. Put it in the treasury. C. He got robbed. D. Returned it to chief priests. What did he do? Ready? Option oh. A bought a field. Option A bought a field. Who bought a field? Judas went out to buy a field. Is that your answer? How sure are you, Noel? 50 50. Joy Kim? You don't know. 10% sure? 100% sure? It is the right answer. Oh my goodness. You must be interested in real estate. Huh? What do you think? Is that the right answer? What's the right answer? Option B, put it in the treasury. Oh my goodness, now we have to rewrite the passion narrative of Jesus uh, and the story of Judas. Because the right answer is he returned it to the chief priests. You know that because he was so upset for what happened to Jesus. He repented and he went out to them and he tried to rescue Jesus as it were but that wouldn't work we read that in Matthew chapter 27 verse 3 when Judas his betrayer saw that Jesus was condemned he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders he brought it back to them mm -hmm. good for you St. Charles you have 10 points ahead of Anthony Claret, you got 30 points on board and Anthony Claret, you still have 20 points on board but you have many points to gain in the rest of the three rounds we have. So pull up your socks and put on your best version so that we'll have a good game. We'll see you back with the second round. Welcome back to the second round of this exciting game between St. Charles and Anthony Claret. We are in round two. At the end of first round, you had 30 points on board with 10 points lead. And Anthony Claret, you have 20 points on board. Not too far away. So you can catch up in, in this round and the rounds that follow. This is another very interesting round. It is called the arranging of the Bible verse. You would be given an envelope. And in this envelope is a Bible verse that is split into words, bits and pieces. Your job is to arrange this verse on the board given to you. You'd only be given two minutes that's 120 seconds so be quick as soon as I say go open the envelope and put out all the pieces of the word on board on the board and you need to pin it on the board that has been given to you the first team that arranges it 
right and then presses the buzzer you'll be given the chance to show your answer if you get it right you get 30 points but if you ring the buzzer on the wrong answer which means after ringing the buzzer we come to know that you have not arranged it rightly the other team will get 10 points so either you get 10 points or you help the other to get 30 points either you get 30 points or you help the other to get 30 points get it yes, are you ready yes father okay very good hold on to your envelope and i will tell you when to start okay as soon as i say go open the envelope and then start arranging are you ready hold on hold on hold on hold on keep your boards and pins ready to start and as soon as you arrange it and you're sure the answer is right your answer should be pinned to the board you can press the buzzer your time starts now be careful not to lose out on any word because if you miss one you get the whole verse wrong it's a very popular verse from the bible minute past we got 90 seconds more it's halfway through one minute past let me give you a clue so that you can get the answer right. The verse begins, you're hearing me, right? You hear me. The verse begins by you are the, you are the. Those are the first three words of your verse. Don't look at the other. Look at your own board because you don't know what the others are doing. Look at your own board. Now you know how it starts and you can finish it quickly you got 30 seconds to go be quick one can arrange one can arrange it another one can pin it the first one who presses the buzzer will get the answer right you got 10 seconds i will give you 30 seconds as grace time for both the teams 30 seconds more it starts now 30 seconds more as soon as you have the answer press the button whoever presses the button buzzer first will have the chance to give the answer okay okay we have St. Charles who have taken the risk and pressed the buzzer if they have got it right they will get 30 points they're already leading with 10 points but if they have got it wrong Anthony Claret will simply get 30 points St. Charles hold your answer to the camera you have arranged you are the light of the world a city built on a hill be cannot hidden is that what you have arranged how did you how, your cannot is in is below so a city built on a hill is that how you have arranged it cannot but even then, there is a word that is jumbled up. 
because the right answer is as you know it a city built on a hill cannot be hidden let's let's see what you have there show it to the camera you have jumbled up just a little bit you have you had 14 seconds more you could have just put it together a city built on a hill cannot be hidden is the right answer but i'm sure that's not what's there on the board and i'm very sorry saint charles though you took the risk but you help Anthony Claret, though they were struggling, they almost got it, but they still stand to get 30 points. Congratulations, Anthony Claret. I'm very sorry, St. Charles. You tried it, but uh, you could have taken a little more time to get the arrangement right. But don't worry, you still have the opportunity to get the answers right because the rounds that are coming up, you can score a lot so don't get discouraged you're still in the game so at the end of round two we have st charles with 30 points and st anthony claret with 50 points you get thank them for they have freely given you 30 points in this round so that makes you 50 but remember the game is not over you have some difficult rounds coming ahead and you still have to remain ahead if you want to win this. Let's come back again for round three. Welcome back to round three of this exciting quiz competition between St. Charles and Anthony Claret. St. Charles did very well in the first round, they scored 30 points but in the second round they just missed by a few words and they generously gave away 30 points to Anthony Claret. So they still have 30 points on board. Anthony Claret, they had 20 from the first round and they gained 30 more in the second round. So you have 50 points on board. But as I said, the game is not over. This is an exciting round it is a rapid fire round one of you will step forward and you will be given 90 seconds and 15 questions for every correct answer you will get 10 points no minus points for this no options for your questions you either know it or you don't if you know the answer give the answer even a wrong answer it's fine because you will not lose anything but if you don't know just say pass and move on to the next question you'll have 90 seconds with 15 questions okay since we started with you in the first round we shall now start with Anthony Claret for this round are you excited yes are you nervous you better be who's going to play Joy Kim is going to take the mic and uh, uh, Noel is going to stand behind Joy Kim and maybe pray for him that he does well. Joy Kim, are you ready to play? Yes, sir. Okay. It's just between you and me. So listen to the question. The question is not going to be on the screen. It's just between us. So listen to the question. If you don't understand the question you can ask me to repeat the question okay are you ready yes father joy kim your time starts now what did god take from adam to create woman uh, a bone of his rib a bone of his rib wrong a rib particularly how many times did an angel of the Lord came to Joseph, the husband of Mary? Two times. Three times is the right answer. Who was the father of David? Pass. Pass. Jesse. How many precepts of the church are there? Five. Five is correct. How 
was St. Paul the Apostle martyred? Um, How was he killed? Stoned to death. No, he was beheaded. How many birds and animals did God ask Noah to take into the ark? Two of each. Correct. A pair. What was the profession of St. Peter? Uh, he was a first pope. He was a f- what was his profession? Wrong answer. It is a, he was a fisherman. Who came? Who can administer the sacrament of holy orders? Uh, Bishop. Bishop is the correct answer. Which prophet did Jesus read from the scroll in the synagogue? Isaiah. Isaiah is correct. Dash is necessary for salvation. What is necessary for salvation? Pass, 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 pass. You had 10 questions to take, but not bad. You four questions, right? So that makes it 40 points. So your total is 90 on the board. Well played, Joy Kim and uh, Noel as well. So it's now St. Charles to play this round. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Who's going to play? Hazel. Hazel is going to play. And Charles, now this is your chance to redeem yourself. You have 30 points on board and you can score a lot in this round and you can have your lead. So Hazel, you're going to play. Yes, you will have 15 questions and you have 90 seconds. So don't waste your time if you don't know the answer. Just if you don't know, just say pass and take the next question. Are you ready? Yes, Father. Okay. Hazel, your time starts now. Name the book in which the speech of God is put down in writing under the breath of the Holy Spirit. Genesis. The answer was the Bible, the entire Bible. Who has God set forth as an expiation or sacrifice of atonement? Us. Jesus Christ. What language was the Bible originally written? Give me any one. Greek. Greek is correct. Hebrew, Aramaic or Greek. 10 points. Isaiah 43 talks about a voice crying out in the wilderness. Who was he referring to? The farmer. John the Baptist is the right answer. What were the clothes of John the Baptist made of? The camels. Correct. Camel's hair. Name the firstborn of Jacob and Rachel. Pass. Joseph. Who was headed? Who was headed tricked by? Who was headed tricked by? Who tricked him? Us. The wise men. Who is the deaconess or helper that St. Paul addresses in Romans chapter 16? Us. Phoebe. When Jesus was transfigured, which apostle was present with him? Name at least one. Transfiguration. No, it was Peter, James and John. How many baskets were left over after the miracle of feeding 5,000 in chapter 14 of Matthew? Three. Twelve baskets. Okay, okay, okay. St. Charles, not to worry. You got two answers, right? Which makes your total 50. But again, I'm telling you. The game is still not over. You still have a final round where you can still gain your points. And Anthony Claret, congratulations to you. You are far ahead with 40 points. You are at 90. But the final round is the crucial one. So still be at it. Don't lose hope. Put in your best. Remember, it's not only knowing your answer, but having the right strategy to play the next round. We'll come back to the final round of Faith Chaps. Welcome back to round four of this exciting quiz competition between St. Charles and Anthony Claret. Both the teams have played well so far. Though St. Charles lost a few points in the rapid fire round, you got only 20 points, but still you are in the game. You have 50 points on board and Anthony Claret, you are with 90 points points on board. This is round four. 
This is called the emoji round. You know what's an emoji, right? We use more emojis nowadays than words. Yeah. Now, you will see a cluster of five emojis put together and all of them will talk to you about one particular event, a person or something to do with our faith. A thing or a person or an event. You have to look at those five emojis and guess what they are talking about. This is a buzzer round. So that's where it gets even more exciting. Okay, so it's not only about knowing the answer, it's playing the game well. It's a buzzer round. If you know the answer, press the buzzer. And if you press the buzzer and give the right answer, you get 20 points. But if you press the buzzer and give the wrong answer, you get minus 10 points. You can gain 20, but with the wrong answer, you can get minus 10 points. Okay? There are totally five questions in this round. So there are 100 points to gain, but also 50 points to lose. Depends how you play. So you are at 50 and you are at 90. The game is still on. Are you ready to play this? Yes, Father. Are you excited? Yes, Father. Give your best and let's see who will make it to the end. St. Charles and Anthony Claret, your eyes on the screen, your hands on the buzzer. And your first question is on the screen. Look at those emojis. What is it all about? It's an event. Guess the event. Okay. Sir Anthony Claret have taken the risk, have rang the buzzer, and if they answer it right, they get 20 points. But if you answer it wrong, you lose 10 points. I want the right answer, the correct answer, not a general answer. So, your answer is God, the creation of the world and creation of Adam and Eve. Okay, give me the right answer. You can't give me multiple answers. Creation of the world. Creation of the world is what you have chosen. That's the final answer. And that's what, that's the first answer you gave me. I can see God there with a halo, a mountain, wind, or that's not a mountain, that's kind of a sand. And it's wind or breath, there is a male, a rib, and a female. You were almost there, but you got it wrong because it is the creation of Adam and Eve, particularly not the creation of the world. If it was the world, you would have emojis like the animals, the stars, and all the others that God created. But this was particularly God taking dust and through his breath, creating, an, uh, creating Adam, and then in the rib of Adam, Eve was created. Good try, Anthony Claret, but you can still afford to lose those 10 points. You are 80 on board. And St. Charles, don't be too careful. Take the risk, because you're on 50, and you have four questions to go. So you have to learn to take the risk. If you know it, you know it. Okay, so play the game. As I said, not just knowing the answer, but also strategically. And Anthony Claret, same to you as well. Let's play the next question. Anthony Claret and Charles, your eyes on the screen and your hands on the buzzer. Your question is on the screen. I want the exact right event not in a general sense. Look at those emojis. 
Okay, okay, that's good. St. Charles, you have taken the risk of trying to answer this second question of the emoji round. And uh, it's quite an interesting emoji strip over there. You have eight emojis there, all talking about one particular biblical event or story. And uh, let's hear it from you. The Cain. answer is Cain. I mean, uh, Abel gave a good sacrifice. To okay. Him. And Cain, uh, God did not accept uh, Cain's sacrifice. Okay. And Cain killed Abel. Congratulations to you. You got it right. That's the right answer. It is the sacrifice of Cain and Abel and then the enmity that was between them and Cain kills Abel is the right answer. Congratulations to you St. Charles. You've got 20 points. See, you're still in the game. And Anthony Claret, picture abhi baki hai. You have to roll with the game. And so the points now on the board is St. Charles, you have 70 points on board and Anthony Claret, 80. Only 10 points in between you. See how things change? You have three more questions to go. So it's between knowing the answer and how quick you are in pressing the buzzer. So, try to concentrate on the emojis and try to relate to all those things that you have studied and take the risk. Your next question is on the screen. Hands on the buzzer. Wow. Wow. That was very quick. <laughs> St. Charles, you didn't spare any time for Anthony Claret to think about the question. You press the buzzer and you have the question on the screen there. And uh, again, there are seven emojis over there. And um, it's a very interesting event. And it will be really good if you can guess it. Not an easy one. It rained 40 days and nights. Okay. And uh, uh, no, Noah and the Ark. Noah and the Ark is what St. Charles have guessed. What do you think? It's right. So you should minus 10 points for me. <laughs> St. Charles, I'm very sorry. That's not the right answer. The right answer is Jesus calming the storm. Look at those, look at those emojis. There is a storm, thunder, rain. And there is a storm a wave and then they are afraid and there is a cross there is no cross in the story of Noah. Noah and his ark that should have given you a clue that it is not from the Old Testament it's from the New Testament Jesus is there the cross is there the Jesus speaks the words and the storm is calm and then you have the boat on a calm lake I'm very sorry about it, but good. Keep trying. The game is still on. You are at 60 points. You are at 60 points now. And you are at 80 points. So it's just 20 points between you two. And you still have two more questions to go. So you can still play this game and you can still win. Either of you could still win this game. Anthony Claret, you're ready. Yes, Father. St. Charles, yes. two more questions to go. Your eyes on the screen, hands on the buzzer. Your next question is on the screen. <laughs> that was pretty quick, Anthony Claret. You press the buzzer first. And so you get the chance to answer it right. So if you answer this right, you'll get 20 points and you will have a lead with totaling 200 points. And that would mean almost that you win this game. But if you give the wrong answer, 
we still have the match going. Are you ready? Yes, boss. Your answer is feeding the five thousand. Feeding the five thousand is what you have chosen, and it is absolutely right. That is the right answer. I'm. Um, congratulations to you, Anthony Claret. You see those emojis? You have bread. You have fish. You have a plate with spoon and fork. I'm not sure of that. <laughs> Whether they had spoon and fork, but you have a plate there to have food, a big gathering, and a basket full of bread. I think that was the right answer, and you were pretty quick to press the buzzer and to get the right answer. You have hundred points, and with a good lead. But still, we have one more question to go. You can still try, though you may not get those points there, but you can still try guessing the right answer. So, Charles, let's see. Let's play this final question and see with how many points you can win. Hands on the buzzer. The final question is on the screen. Not an easy one. Guess, guess the above. What is it? Okay, I'll give you a clue. As both of them are hesitating, it's not a scripture question. Neither Old Testament nor New Testament. It is from the theology. Something that you know. Something that you do. Both of you have nothing much to lose, but you could still gain twenty points. You want to try? No. So, Charles, you want to try? You have no clue what it is, and you have no clue what it is. Don't you go to confession? The right answer is confession. You have an emoji with tears, a sign, a symbol of repentance. You have a priest there with a stole, purple stole, and you have the church, which the priest represents, and you have the hand, which would say a sign of blessing or giving absolution, and then you have a person going out happy. Because he or she is forgiven. Congratulations, to Anthony Anthony's Claret. You have won this game with 100 points on board. And Saint Charles, you played really well. You had the chance to make it through the rounds, but here and there you jumbled up a little bit. But yet, you played well. Congratulations to you. You had 60 points, not too far away from uh, Anthony Claret. But you played well. But anyway, all the best. You can still come back again for the next year and still do well. I want to thank our sponsors, Amas Pastries, who have been very generous with us and supporting our ministry right through. Amas Pastries is a business built with passion, a business built with total trust and faith in the Lord. Amas Pastries is known for its best cakes, pastries and snacks. They have 59 outlets in total, 42 in Bangalore, 10 in Kerala, 3 in Coimbatore and 4 in Dubai. The name Amma means mother, refers to Mary our mother and is also a tribute to every mother and her love for her children. So special thanks to their support for our ministry as they proudly say Amma's pastries, the sweetness of a mother's love served on a platter. Thanks for joining us in this episode of Faith Chimes, our inter-school quiz competition. We had a wonderful game between St. Charles and Anthony Claret. And congratulations to Anthony Claret, you have won this game. And with this, 
now you move on to the semi-finals so you will be playing against uh, uh, San Alfonso's Academy in your semi-finals and if you win there you go to the finals and St. Charles congratulations for you too you really played well and wish you all the best when you come back again next year you did play well and you make your school proud and you're most welcome and on behalf of all of us here at uh, Redemptus Media Center um, I would like to present you a small memento we also have the, the teachers who uh, helped our students so I call upon the two mentors who have accompanied them good good they really did well come good congratulations We'll see you again now for the semi-finals. We have a wonderful game coming up between Anthony Claret and uh, St. Alfonso's Academy. And the second match in the semi-finals is between Sacred Art Girls High School versus St. Vincent Poloti. Till then, keep supporting your favorite team. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends and family, especially with those who are part of the, of the institution. So till the next episode, stay safe.